Hello, my name is Bishop Jack Weiser of the First Apostles Doctrine Church and the Just for Jesus Challenge Homeless Outreach Ministry. I thank you for joining me today and listening to my message that God has given to me. I hope it blesses your heart. My heart goes out to the poor and the needy and the least of these in the land. And it's time we step forward that we may help them, get our churches open for them. We must turn the lights on and make ready for the coming of God's children, the least of these, the lost, the inmates, the homeless, and the hurting. Enjoy what God has put on my heart to share with you. May God bless you with these words. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, we ask that your word be spoken with power and authority, that it would be real to us, Lord, that we would take it with us, that we would go out, others would truly know that we've been in the presence of the Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Please be seated. <laughs> Okay, we're going to continue on the Tree of Life, and from Eden to Eden, for those of you who have been coming along here, uh, for the last few, uh, many Sundays, I should say, on the, the real meaning of communion. And you will never be able to put, put communion and the meaning of it into one message, uh, other than the cross of Christ. Now, that consists of the whole life of Jesus. But, the title today is, Have You Found It? And it's... Uh, uh, we're going to move along, continue to walk in this vineyard. And as we uh, now see uh, many different signs in this vineyard as we've been talking. So what do you see in the vineyard? Now we've been talking about a lot of different things. You see the tower in the vineyard. You see the, the wine press in the vineyard. You see the servants in the vineyard. You see uh, the wayside. You see the stony place. You see the thorns. And you see the good ground. Now there's other things in this vineyard. Uh, you know, the fig tree and some other things were, were there along the way. But where is this good ground? And there's where we miss the mark in many, many ways. We tend to have fallen short in this area. Now in the vineyard, there's wild grapes. Remember we talked about that, the wild grapes, the false teachers, the false prophets, the false, the fake Christians, the pretenders, the reenactors, okay? It's easy to go around and say you know Jesus. It's easy to go around and say you're a Christian, uh, but it's a whole other thing to live in. Okay, that's where uh, we have fallen short in, in many ways. And more so, uh, as I move ahead in this ministry and, and, and look into some things, uh, we are in some uh, a terrible spiritual decline. Uh, and, uh, boy, it really makes the book of Revelation and what's coming uh, mean so much more. Uh, the more God opens up this door for me to see through it, it is just unbelievable what we have done. What do we have become as a people? And what we have let happen as a nation is unspeakable. It is uh, above and beyond what uh, I could ever have imagined. But I can only do what I'm called to do and to the best of my ability and, and just uh, wait till that day comes. Now in the vineyard, there are wild grapes and there's fig trees. And these fig trees with no fruit, okay? So what, you know, fig trees were common in the, in the grapevines, <coughs> among the grapevines in the gardens, okay? So they would have had fig trees. In there. Now, it, now, these fig trees, as you read in the Bible, are going to depict a couple of things. <coughs> Mainly, if you walk and if you want to go back and, and in this theology, you're going to see most of the theologians uh, will, will consider the fig tree Israel. All right? Israel is the main, uh, is what they're going to lean on, on, on a couple things where Jesus said, walked up to the fig tree and withered it. Okay? So, but, you know, don't hang your hat there. All right? Don't, don't close the box. That's not so, that, that is one way, but it's also you, us, individual, okay? Now, so you have to apply it that way. <clears throat> and it's also this age, this time, all right, in, in our lives. Uh, you know, if you, want, if you want to go out in life and you want to continue to, to live your way, you want to continue to, to go out and, uh, you know, do your drugs or, you know, uh, hook up with your friends or your gangs or your, you know, do whatever it is that you want to do, then go do it. I'm going to tell you something. Get out there and live it up now, man. Do it now. Because it's the only heaven you may ever see. Now is the time. Don't waste, don't, 
and especially don't come here and misuse Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't come here and come into a faith-based ministry and use Jesus to get your comforts and then go back out in the world and live hell. I mean, because uh, people, you're going you're gonna to find that day when you take your last breath, Jesus is real, hell is real, and heaven is real. And you're going to find it to be true. And that's going to be too late for some of you. Okay? It's not a game. The best thing you can do is if you truly don't want Christ in your life, get out of here. Go live it up. Go live your life, man. Enjoy it all. You know, suck in all the all the fruit that you can get out there. And go live it up. Because once you take your last breath, there's going to be flames awaiting you. And it's going to be hell forever. You know, you're better off doing that than to do that plus carry Jesus' name and misuse it. Amen. It's going to be worse yet. You make that decision, all right? And if you don't want to make that decision, you know what? Just get out. Leave the Christian alone. All right? Just get out of there. Go live it up. You don't see too many people running to do that, though. Because everybody, I don't care who you are. I don't care how tough you think you are. I don't care how cool you think you are. I don't care who you think you are. No matter where you end up, there's always that still small voice inside of you that lets you know that God's real. Amen. There's always that voice in there that always tells you that there's something. And you should know that. You know it. You found it. I don't care how hardcore you are. I don't care where you've been or what you've done. I'm going to tell you something deep inside of you. That voice is still there and you'll never hide from it. You'll never ever hide from it. But I'm going to tell you something. When you take your last breath, you're going to hope to God you hear it. But if you don't, all you're going to hear is the hisses of Satan. All you're going to do is hear the hisses of the hell that you become. That's up to you. Your choice. So you can walk in his vineyard however you want. Now, you see, Israel and you are this fruitless and wild vine or not. And, it, and, and right now, in this nation, as you walk through this vineyard, the wine press is empty. The wine press is empty. There isn't anything going on. There's more hurt and pain out there. No wonders people are doing what they're doing. No, one, no wonders that you, know, you go out there and try to survive. No wonders people are, are, are committing crimes to survive. Where else can you turn? What else can you do? No wonders, you know, you really can't blame the gangs out there from hooking up because well, what else they got to do? They can't make it out into the world. They got to survive somehow. That doesn't give anybody the right to go out and, and uh, you know, uh, pressure gang mentality or even yourself, your religion on others. No, you go out there and you should live it. You're, you're, whatever you believe in, you should, you should live. Go live it. Okay? I'm living it. That's all. I'm living what I believe in, and here it is. Okay? I'm living it. All right? That's it. I'm going to tell you something. I'm living it, and I didn't have to sell anybody drugs. I didn't have to get anybody drunk. I didn't have to go out. I didn't have to go out and, and beat anyone up anymore. I didn't have to go out and you know get get into the fights anymore to, to build it. I didn't have to do that. I didn't have to go out and be cool in the town, you know, and stake my claim. I didn't have to do those things. I didn't have to go into bar rooms and stay and you know make that my ground, you know, in, in the bar rooms. I don't have to do that anymore. You understand that? I didn't have to do that. All I had to do is serve Jesus Christ and believe in what happened. Here it is. Amen. It's the largest faith-based ministry in the state. Amen. Amen. And what happened? I didn't have to do anything <coughs> other than serve Christ. Amen. Right. Amen. All I had to do was begin in 1994, put those bad choices away to the best of my ability, and serve Christ. And look what happened. Uh, now that's the vineyard. I, I, because I started walking in the real vineyard, I found something, see? I found something in that vineyard. All right, I found that good ground. And everyone thinks that they found the good ground. No, you didn't find the good ground. See, most all churches are hiding in this empty wine press. See, like Gideon hiding this wheat. Remember we talked about that? Gideon was hiding in the wine press uh, with his wheat. You don't put wheat in the wine press. Well, who is he hiding from? He's hiding from the enemy. He's afraid. He was hiding from the good ground. Now, that doesn't make sense, does it? Yeah, he was hiding from the enemy. He is hiding from this, but that was actually the good ground. Now, you have to understand this. Once again, I'm going to continue on this and throw all this stuff out of uh, here. You do with it what you will. Okay? He was hiding from this good ground. See, we've fallen uh, short of understanding what the true gospel means. You know, we, we think or we thought that Jesus, God, would just come and lay it right out there for us and say, there you go, it's that simple. Well, he, he didn't. No. 
He wants you to run the race. He wants you to fight for it. He wants you to, to study it. He wants you to look into it. He wants you to experience it. See, the problem is, is once you think you know it all, you don't have to experience anything. Hmm. <coughs> well, isn't that true? <coughs> once you know it all, what do you have to experience? Nothing. Just yourself. It's all about you. When you're living it, and you don't really know it all, but yet you understand it, then you're going to experience it. And that's what Jesus was teaching. See, the Pharisees in religion makes you think, I know it all. See? We got it all right. That isn't it? So, I don't really have to experience anything. It's just there, you know? It's, it's that little saying that I do not like very much, that is, it is what it is. Yeah. Oh, I don't like that. I don't get along well with that. You know why? Because what, when I hear that, I can see somebody saying that as they stare at this man dying on the cross and say, <coughs> it is what it is. Oh. And that bothers me. Mm -hmm. mm. You can't apply that there, can you? No. no. <coughs> See, I'm not going to live in a plastic world. I'm not going to live in a pretend cartoon world. It is what it is. This is a piece of plastic. Yeah, it is. I really don't care about that. But when I look at the life of Jesus Christ and what he taught, and this, no, I am not going to say, well, it is what it is. No. Because now I just said that I live in a place that is not of God. going to say that about God? Well, it is what it is. <coughs> What's up with that? That's almost scary, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is what it is. No, no. God didn't teach that, did he? <laughs> Jesus said, I come to show you a way and a life. You don't look at the almighty God and say, well, it is what it is. He said, you better know what it is. You better live what it is. Amen. Amen. Well, you're never going to know it. Instead, he's going to look at the goats and say, it is what it is. Amen. I don't know you. Amen. You're plastic. You're a cartoon book. You're a reenactor. You're a pretender. Amen. <laughs> Some of you better, better listen to that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Maybe you got to back up and read some, or listen to some of the other sermons so you can get caught up. <clears throat> you know, I, I hope I hold up. This might be a, to be continued. You know, I don't know if I'll get everything in today. I, I don't know. So, have you fallen short of understanding the gospel? Many have. Don't think that you haven't. Don't lie to yourself, and don't lie to God, and don't lie to each other. Don't think yourself self-righteous. We fail to truly live it. Only a true, a few find it. The good ground, that is. Most of you don't even know where to look for the good ground. You only think you do. Yeah, you only think you do. You know what some churches want to be? Uh, seriously, you know what they really want to be? They want to be like the Twix candy bar. <laughs> Same thing, but different rappers, right? So, huh? Seriously. God's over here, and I want to be over here, but I have a different rapper on. Seriously. Hold it that one for a while. But isn't that, isn't that what the church is trying to do? Yeah, trying to be God in their own way as a different rapper or pretender. Huh. Maybe you got to go watch that commercial. Mary found a good part, didn't she? Remember? Yeah. Remember Mary fell, at the knees, fell on her knees at the feet of Jesus and, and he said, she's found a good part and I won't take it from her. What did she find? She found, you know what she found? Come on, people, you got to listen. You know what she found? Her worst enemy. Have you found your worst enemy? Christ is your worst enemy if you don't know him. 
Christ is going to destroy you. Not only destroy you, he is going to turn you into dust. Maybe you don't understand that. You think it's all lovey-dovey, don't you? Come on. Some of you think it's all lovey-dovey. I'm going to go and skip and skip over to Jesus and he's just going to love me all up and it's going to be all over. No, something. You better go up to him in trembling fear. You better go up to that man in trembling fear and respect because I'm going to tell you something. He's the worst enemy you will ever face. He's the man that in a moment can grind you to nothing but powder. He's the person that could put you into a hell that is unspeakable. Into a place in torment of fire that can hardly be described. Is that what you want? No. Have you found that man? Most of us go up there and we start telling Jesus what to do, don't we? We start telling Jesus what we want. How many of you go out and tell your enemies what you want? Go try to tell one of your enemies right now what you want and what you uh, think that you should have. What would they do to you? Huh? Laugh at you. They laugh at you. So how do you do that? How in the world do you ever go to your worst enemy? But yet, your greatest friend ever. That's the turning point of the gospel. Oh, come on, people. I hope you're hearing something. Amen. 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 Peter, Peter made Jesus his worst enemy, didn't he? He yes. said, I don't know you. Huh? Yeah. Yes. Isn't that blasphemy? Yes. What is that? Damnation? Peter understood, but he didn't understand. See, she came over and he said, she found a good, she's scared to death of me, Mary. She's trembling. She knows that I have control over her very soul. She found a good ground. Mm -hmm. She found a good ground among a world of sin out there that she doesn't know what to do with, but yet it's destroying her life. Let's go to Matthew 13. Now listen carefully. For those of you who listen to the Kingdom of Heaven series, listen carefully, okay? And go listen to that if you want to. <clears throat> Matthew 13. Verse 40, 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven. Now remember, the kingdom of heaven. We need to go listen to that. To get caught up. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. The which, when a man has found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he has, and buyeth the field. He found a good part. It was hidden. It's not out there just, here it is, come and get it. No, no, it, it was hidden. He had to find it. Then once he found it, he had to keep it hid until he went and got himself in order that he could buy the whole good ground. Mm -hmm. Now listen, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, the good part, the beautiful part, the right thing, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all he had and bought it. Now hold on to something. Did you ever look at that closely? He went and sold all he had and <coughs> bought it. you've given it all. Now, now see, he had to face his worst enemies to buy that pearl, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, he did. But, see, I don't, I, I don't think you're here because most of you, from the beginning, you know, you were brought up in churches. I heard about Jesus. I know about Jesus. But you were never taught properly about Jesus. Don't you understand? Are you listening to something here? Yep. He, all of a sudden, this became his worst enemy. What do you think happened to the rich man when he walked up to Jesus and said, what must I do to have eternal life? And, and Jesus said to the rich man, go sell all that you have and then come and follow me. Jesus just became his worst enemy. enemy. And the man said, wait a minute. And he went away sorrowful. Wait, you're my enemy. 
What happened to this man? He had to go and he had to sell all he had to buy that pearl. He had to face all those Goliath. Well, I'm going to have to lose this. I've got to give up this. I've got to give up everything to buy that pearl. That makes me mad. That upsets me. I have to give up my drugs. Give up my gangs. Give up my friends. Give up my families. Give up everything. That's, a, that's an enemy in order to have the true good girl. This man found a treasure, and he goes out and he buys the field. <clears throat> Are you hearing anything out there? Amen. Amen. See, this world, this world is a huge vineyard, people. And you've got to start looking at it properly. No matter where you are, no matter where God puts you as a Christian, I don't care where he puts you, or what you're doing, or what your belief is. Inside of all that is the good ground. And when you find that, you found Christ. When you find that, you found <laughs> eternal salvation, the power of the cross. If you can grasp that, the true communion. See, where are you at then in this vineyard? Where are you at? Huh? Are you in the stony place? If you've been listening over these weeks, are you in the stony place? Are you on the wayside? Are, are you in the, the thorns? Are you one of the great gatherers, maybe? Are you in the tower? Where are you? Maybe you, are you in the press? Hiding. Where are you? See, the vineyard has to operate, but it doesn't matter where you are in it. It matters what, it matter what the purpose is. Can you see the whole meaning of this machine? Now, I'm going to tell you something. You go up to the to uh, the broccoli glass plant, you go in there, and that thing, from beginning to end, from the hot end to all of it, a huge plant and a huge operation, <laughs> and it goes through this whole thing, and what comes out? A bottle. Mm -hmm. A bottle. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. That's it. <laughs> Everyone's doing their own job in their own positions. All of this, you know, this big operation to make a bottle. A bottle. Same thing in a figure, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's doing their own job for what? For a wine. <laughs> and then you gotta put it in a bottle, but it was wine skins. So, so it's the purpose, right? But now listen. But unless the good ground is fine, found, that vine is useless. That that vineyard is useless. It's just a religion. It's wild grapes. Wild grapes can make wine. <clears throat> or maybe you're the fig tree. Don't forget about the fig tree. It's in the garden, right? Yep. Maybe you're the fig tree. Maybe you're the one in the garden that you just kind of think that you got it all done, it all been there, done that. You just have it have it covered. You see what's going on. You understand. You got it. But hey, you're right there. See, notice I left this good ground for last, so to speak, in a way, because everyone thinks that that's where they're at. Good ground. And they found it. Well, most of you aren't. That's unfortunate. You're not. It's not really a bad thing, but you're, you're not. And those of you who are in danger you can thank your leaders out there, your spiritual leaders, for uh, misleading you and, and confusing you. Uh, not truly sure teaching you what the gospel message is about. Because if they were, you wouldn't see such a disaster in the world today with the um, you know, 18 to 25,000 starving children uh, dying every day. 18 to 25,000 dying every day. Mental health hospitals filling up, and mm -hmm. the jails filling up, and homelessness growing to this degree, and disease and sickness. See, if the church was really doing its job, you wouldn't see that. <laughs> Satan's having a field day. Mm -hmm. He really is. And not that I don't, I don't like giving Satan any glory because he don't deserve none of it. But, but the bottom line truth of it is, is that his his minions and his entities are having a field day. 
And they tremble. See, they tremble. Why do they tremble? They got it. They tremble. Why? We don't tremble. We got it made. They know that God is their worst enemy. Remember when he comes up to Legion? Jesus comes up to Legion and, and the enemy says, the devil say to Jesus, what? Have you come and cast us out before our time? They were trembling. They know that Jesus can destroy and will destroy. Nicodemus comes out at night to Jesus. He was an enemy. He was making Nicodemus do something he didn't want to do. He was making him think in ways he didn't want to think. The only way you'll become friends with Christ is when you have that mind change. You're hearing it now today. If you listen, Deuteronomy 32. Now I want you to listen to a couple of things. Take notes if you're taking notes or just listen. And you've got to always remember people. You know, Jesus wants you just the way you are. He loves you just the way you are. And it's your sin and shortcomings and mistakes that made you who you are. He just wants you to love. So if you aren't taking notes, you know, you don't just give him an opportunity. Open your mind up and listen. You, he's God, you're not. You know, the spirit inside you, he can do things within you and teach you something that you don't even know. It might not even happen for a week or a month or a year, ten years from now. All you have to do is have a desire to learn, to know the man, this simple man that loves you so much. Mm -hmm. That he came and he taught in ways to just to know you as a friend, just to love you as a friend, and to forgive you. To know he knows exactly where you've been, what you've done, he knows all your mistakes, he knows all of your issues, all of your problems, that, that man that loves you that much. That's it. Get to know. Have your mind open that you truly want to get to know that. It doesn't matter if you understand this fully. If this Bible is meant to be understood like that, it would be mastered by no one will ever master this Bible. This, this Bible is so, so powerful, it has so much in it, it's beyond on what we could ever uh, put into words. Uh, Deuteronomy 32, starting in verse 28. <coughs> well, I'm going to have a hard time some of these words, probably as my throat the way it is. We'll see. Uh, Deuteronomy 32, starting in verse 28. For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. So you've got to consider what's to come. You see, if you want Christ to be your best friend, and that day you take your last breath, and that day when he comes back and says, okay, world, it's done, he better be your friend. Did you know that some of you, some of you if you're smart, sometimes your, your worst enemy is become your best friend. You know why? Because that's how you learn to forgive. Amen. Amen. That's the only thing with Jesus, see. Because he has done nothing wrong. So therefore you've learned that he has forgiven you. So you have forgiven yourself. Amen. You understand that? Amen. Amen. All right. That's what it's all about now. If you're with me. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand in flight except the rock has sold them and the Lord has shut them up? <coughs> For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom in the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter. They, they don't have the communion now. With me, remember those yeah. wild grapes. Oh. See the vineyard, man. He goes right back to that vineyard. That vineyard teaching must come through. See now, out of all of that, now you take Jesus taking his twelve disciples, sitting them down, and going through the communion. Okay, mm -hmm. do this in remembrance of me. Okay, so he was applying all oh, new the vineyard, the whole nine yards. You've got to see that in the whole the whole Bible. So here's God saying the the comparing uh, this to what. His end time judgment on what? Your, your, your bitter grapes. Your wild grapes. Okay? Both vine and grapes. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. 
Okay? Now you can you can go over to the New Testament. What did Jesus say about the rust okay, of the enemy? The rust, that means the venom of the enemy. Yep. Same thing. Okay? So here he's comparing they defile the vineyard. The wine press is empty. It has weed in it. They're hiding in the wine press. Okay? They aren't taking care of the stony ground. They aren't taking care of the thorny ground. They aren't going where they should be going. Therefore, their good ground is useless. Their good ground is a bunch of fig trees that grow fruit. <clears throat> is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belong with vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted? Which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. That's what God is going to say. Jesus is going to say now. Now you and your vineyards, what you've defiled my vineyard. You made it a bunch of wild grapes. You've forgotten the gospel. You went through it. In that day, in that moment, that moment you take your last breath, he's going to say, okay, where is your God? Huh? Let your gods come and protect you now. Let your gods come and save you now from the hell that you are going to enter. They aren't going to be there. Nowhere around. You can read it for yourself. This is the bigger picture, people, of the communion. Look what you've done in my vineyard. Now, people, just take a moment in your mind and just picture Jesus' life in three years. He walked among people, the good ground. Okay? Where did he walk? Among the enemy. And he, and he touched people and he healed them. He showed them love. He showed them forgiveness. He, he went out among that. It was that part of the vineyard that was pure and holy. The other side of the candy bar there was a coloring book. There was pretenders. True salvation is understanding what the good crowd is. Okay? Now let's go to uh, Numbers. Numbers 13. Numbers 13. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get ye up this way southward and go unto the mountain <clears throat> and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwelleth therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. And what the land is that they dwell in, whether it, is, it be good or bad, and what cities they be that dwell in whether in tents or in strongholds. And what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be ye of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now, <clears throat> the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Rio as Men came to Hamath, and they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron, where Ahiman and Sheesha and Telemai, the children of Hanak, were. Now, Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And they came unto the brook of Eskol and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bear it between two upon a staff, 
and they brought of the pomegranates, pom <clears throat> the pomegranates, and of the figs. The place was called the brook Eshko because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. So what happens here? The spies go into enemy territory. They go into enemy territory, and we're going to read some more. And the significant part of all this is what do they come back with? Two men with the staff and a cluster of grapes. Oh, come on now. You, you want to tell me that that would be common? Why would two men, why would you come back with one cluster of grapes? Either they had many clusters, and they ate them on the way, and only ended up with one. Why two men? Now start applying the Bible. You have two witnesses. You have the staff, my rod and my staff is with me. You have the grape, the communion. Come on, you see it? What did they bring back? Christ. They brought back the gospel. They come back and they found it. You see that? Two men come back with the pole. That's all it says. And they come back with the grape. They found the good ground. They found it. So God was saying, it's there. The gospel is there. The communion is there. My love for the poor is there. They're oppressed. They're oppressing my people just like you were slaves. I delivered you. Now you are going to go and deliver my people. Come on, are you with me? Now listen, now watch what happens right away. Here's our, our minds. Now watch. Here's what we do as people. Now watch. And, uh, and they return. Now it says back here, and the branch... Uh, that was a branch of cluster of grapes. Now, a lot of people, they always make this out to be that it was this big, beautiful cluster of grapes, right? Huge. <coughs> no, it wasn't. It just says a cluster of grapes. Where did we get that out? Now, how many of you thought that, huh? You've been taught that these, these are like huge grapes. Wonderful, beautiful grapes. No, it just says right there, it says a uh, cluster of grapes. That's all. But see, some minister or someone could just throw that out there. We just jump all over. We want to see this huge thing of grapes. It took two men to care. No, it didn't. That, that's not what this was about. This was about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Something that we would be able to understand from back in Numbers to this day in the vineyard. Something we'd be able to grasp and hold on to. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. It was just a cluster of grapes. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that look a little bit funny? Two guys come along. Cluster of grapes, you know? They probably said, well, you eat them all or what? But the, the main thing was the symbolic nature. This was the communion, this was right. Jesus. Then bear it between two upon a staff, okay? <laughs> Verse 26. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them, and unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. Okay? So they, they showed them other, other fruit they had. Okay, And they told him, and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it flows with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong, that dwell on the land, and the cities are walled, and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. These were giants, big giants, men like the Philistines, like the uh, Goliath, these giants, okay? So right away, what happens? They start doubting. Uh, right away. Man, they're, they're, they're in a stronghold, and they're fortified. They're the enemy. But you know what? That's where the good ground is. Huh? And right away, I'm not going to go out there. I'm not going to go do it. Man, they got some big people there. And Amal, the Amaleks, that's why Gideon was hit, hidden in the, the wine press, remember? He was in there hiding his wheat, hiding from the end. The Amaleks dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the, the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb still, still the people 
before Moses, he stilled the people. He must have done one of those, peace be still, you know? Right here, stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Now here's Caleb, oh, he wants to go right away. No plan, no nothing, let's just go. All right? So here you got people that are pointing out the bad. You got one person who wants to charge in, and you know. So here you got the vineyard at work, all right. So, but the men that went up with him said, "We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we." So right away, it's just too much for us, too much work. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Enet, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight, as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. So, so we were we were like grasshoppers. We'll never stand a chance. They're giants. You send the, the spies out, they come back with the answer, the good ground, the gospel of Jesus, and all of a sudden you make up excuses why you won't go out there. You know what it's called? It's just called wealth, riches, and pride. Arrogance is called head knowledge. It's called the love of prosperity and the love of, of, of uh, all fame. I want fame. I want to be rich and religious and I want all the good stuff. I don't want to go good ground. I'll claim to have the good ground, but I don't. I have all the vineyards but the good ground. I don't have the great cluster. I don't have the true gospel of Christ because I'm not going out there to get it. What destroyed Solomon? He became big in his own eyes. That destroyed Solomon. Solomon was told, you used to be small in your own eyes. You used to be humble, and God blessed you, but now you became big, and he will destroy you. They didn't realize that being as grasshoppers, as humble servants of God, they were more powerful than they could ever imagine. You go and get the grapes. See, we want to be large in God's eyes instead of little grasshoppers. And then the other thing is, we don't want to carry the grapes. You see, Jesus, did he not tell us to go out in twos? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did he really? Mm -hmm. He said go out in twos. And then he said to do what? Pick up your cross. You can. People, that cross is a great cross. People you go out and bring in yeah. in enemy territory. Do you understand that? Yeah, yes. Amen. Amen. The staff and the grapes became the cross of Christ. Oh. He said, Now you go out your cross. And when you come back, you will be carrying my children. <coughs> Amen. Have you found that? Oh, see, we think, we think going into the thorny bushes and going into the stony places and going into the byways was the hard part. Oh, no, no, that's, that's in the vineyard. They're growing. You say you go find a good job. We think we found it. Jesus says, 
there's only a few find it. Two men carrying the gospel, the grapes. They found the good ground. Have you found it? It's not you. It's not your religion. It's not your beliefs. It's all the cross of Christ. And there's crosses laying out there all over in this world. People that need picked up and brought back. <coughs> the people who really care. That's what this ministry is all about. Amen. Amen. This ministry, Amen. by the way, is a huge wine press. And those of you that are in here, there's a lot of grapes. You'll never change if you don't want to. Amen. You'll never get into the wine press. But those of you who truly want to change, you'll be in the wine press, and conviction and truth will always be trampling you down. That's Christianity. Mm -hmm. Always be making you a better person. And you can be. The good ground isn't in your church. It's not in your home. It's not in you. It's out there, people. Mm -hmm. Out there where you don't want to go, let alone carrying it back to the church. You know, a lot of you, by the way, let me give you a good example. This would be a good place for it. A lot of you sitting here sat in a jail cell for some time. There's people right now in those prisons and jail that are the good ground. And you're in a ministry and you're a part of providing a hope and a future for them if you're hearing what's being said here today. Amen. Amen. And you can only make it better or you can make it worse. And then the blood will be on your shoulders. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. That's why the best thing for you to do is if you don't believe it and you don't want what you see here, then you better pack up and you better get out of here and go Amen. live in heaven as best you can. Amen. Can you grasp that? Amen. Amen. Some of you sit here and you're wondering where God's calling you and what he could do for you. I'm going to tell you right now, you sat in jail cells. There's some of you that sat in the mental health unit. But the, the ones in the jail cells right now, what do you do? Are you praying for that next inmate that gets out? That next cluster of grape that gets thrown out on the street? Are you ready to go there and be the staff and pick them up and bring them into a place where he can get rehabilitation and get going in the right direction? Does that even affect you? Amen. If that wasn't in my heart, none of you would be here. Right. Amen. 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 So what are you going to do for it? That's Christianity, people. Amen. You're the ones that can be the spies. You're the ones that can be the servants. You're the ones that would be brave enough and, and street smart enough, wise enough to go out there in enemy territory and bring back the true gospel. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. what it's about. Amen. Jesus went up into the, into the caves and he brought legion out. And he delivered legion. And he sent him, a staff, a cluster of grapes, into the town. He said, now you go. He went and found the good ground among where? The stony place. You find a good ground among the stony places. You find a good ground among the thorns. You find a good ground. Hey, underneath those stones is good ground, people. I don't know yeah. if you're hearing me. Amen. You're either shocked or you're, you're not hearing me. We're not done yet either. Amen. 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 Come on. First Samuel. <laughs> talked about this before and I'm not going to
1 Samuel 4, starting in verse 4. That's 4 to 11. I know if you have your Bible, you can read that. I'm going to explain it. You can read all that. What happened was the Israelites were losing the battles. But I better read it. I gotta read it. Get warmed up here. You gotta be obedient. So the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring <coughs> incense the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of Hosts, which dwells between the cherubims. Now listen. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni, of uh, Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, yes, <coughs> were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. And when the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted, with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. So what happened was they were losing. What did they do? Let's go get the Ark of the Covenant. They already had the grapes, didn't they? Mm -hmm. yeah. They already had the grapes. They had the, the, the Ark of the Covenant and two men carrying it. There it was. They had it. Israel had it. They brought it into the camp. Everybody rejoicing. They had it for the wrong reasons. That's what people do with Jesus. Carry Jesus around for all the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. You misuse him, you mistreat him, you don't use the name right, you don't live the life, all you do is go around and say you're a Christian. Carrying on. Oh, yeah, people all Sunday mornings right now, they're coming in, and, you know, they're praying down the Holy Ghost, you know. Look, if the Holy Ghost isn't already there, he's not coming there. Mm -hmm. You don't have to pray down the Holy Ghost, he's either there or he's not there. So they're going to bring him on. Bring out the ark and come, the Holy Ghost, and let's rejoice and have a good time. Now, at the end of service, we'll put him away. We'll go home and eat. Mm. Yeah, what to do. Go home and eat or watch football on a big football day, you know? Won't think about God again till the end of the week. So, what do they do? They bring the ark and the coming in, and the people rejoice. And when the Philistines heard, verse 6, and when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, What meaneth the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews. And they understood that the ark of the Lord was coming to the, the camp. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God is coming to the camp. And they said, Woe unto us, for there has not been such a thing heretofore. They were scared. The enemy was trembling at the presence of God. God's own people weren't even trembling at his sight. They were just carrying on, working away. We got God. What do you fear? You know something? Many of you out there fear the alcohol, the drugs, and the needle that you uh, are addicted to more than you fear God Almighty, but yet you still do it, don't you? Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? That you fear your own addictions more than you do the Almighty God. That's something to ponder, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. <coughs> okay. Woe unto us who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods. These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Be strong and conduct yourselves like men, O ye Philistines, that ye be not servants unto the Hebrews, 
as they have been to you. Conduct yourselves like men and fight. They're saying, why don't you wise up? Conduct yourselves like men and get out there and fight. Okay. And the Philistines fought, and Israel was smitten. They lost. And they fled every man into his tent, and there was a very great slaughter. For there fell of Israel 30,000 footmen. They bring the Ark of the Covenant in, and they lose. They were slaughtered. And there ran a man of Benjamin out of the army. Wait, look, verse 11. And the Ark of God was taken, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were slain. The two men carried the pole were dead. You see, remember Ananias and Sapphira? They were told to go get their cluster of grapes. And they walked in with only half. And they both died. And they brought it to the apostles. There's no halfway with God. The Israelites carry this out, the Ark of the Covenant out, they misused it. <laughs> That's not what it was supposed to be used for, just like we do with Jesus. You misuse Jesus. Jesus has a lot to offer you. Like I've told you before, everywhere you go, Jesus is all over. He puts you here, you've got Jesus here, you've got a Bible, you see churches, you see it everywhere, and you misuse it. The only time you use Jesus is when you're down and out. You come running to him, just like now. You want to worship, you want him in your life. And then all of a sudden, you wonder, where did he go? You know where he went? He went to the Philistines. He went right back out with the enemy, and he's saying, if you want me, you come and get me. Amen. Jesus said, follow me. If you want me, you come and get me. Amen. You come and find me. Amen. Amen. We just think that we can just call on Jesus and run right up to us and it's all over. No, he said, you come and get me. And there's people out there. Now listen, you got to listen to me carefully here as I go through this. You go to 1 Samuel 6, 21. You jump right over. over read, just read uh, 1 Samuel 6. Uh, uh, the whole chapter later today would be good for you to do. And what happened? The Philistines returned to the ark. They don't really want it. It's out here. Who's going to take it? God's people will take it. Are they going to come and get it? They end up giving it back. But where's the church at? To give it back. I don't think you're quite hearing me. Amen. There's people laying all over out there in the streets. People homeless and sick and poor. They're wandering the streets homeless. The state, the government is saying, the enemy is saying, hey, we don't really want them either. Here, take them, church. Take the cluster, take the covenant. And the church is saying, well, we don't want them either. The only thing we want is we want the covenant. We want to come in and praise the Lord. Up and down, no one. God says, Ichabod's here, church. Ichabod's all over you. He's out there. The good ground is out there, and you don't want it. Amen. Amen. This is a church that finally stood up and said, wait a minute. We found the good ground. I know where it's at. It's in the jail cells, in the middle health units, under the bridges, out in the streets, wandering our streets. That's the good ground. Start carrying them in. Now you know why. People, some of you don't even realize it's only the modern day way of doing it. You're going out in your little four-wheel vehicles, you know, and you're picking up somebody. You're the pole coming back with a cluster. You don't even know it. Amen. 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 That's what this is all about. That's finding the good ground. You think the good ground is one little patch. It's all about you. You think the good ground is your only your square footage of your sanctuary. That's the good ground. No, it isn't. The good ground is this whole earth. And it's anywhere a seed fell and God created. That's the good ground. Amen. 
Everywhere there's no one laying right now in a cardboard box. That's the good ground. Everywhere in a jail cell right now. I'll take you for a walk. You want to see some good ground? Unbelievable good ground? I'll take you for a walk to the Johnson House in San Simon. You can look at all those little cells right there. And you can see one little seed of good ground. But you know what? Those people didn't look good enough to you. But it doesn't mean they didn't have a right to know God. Amen. That's a whole other message right there. Amen. What happened Amen. to that good ground? Where did that good ground be throw it to? Where is it at? I'm going to find it. Amen. 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 I don't think you understand that. I said I'm going to find it. Amen. 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 We found it, but we don't want it. We don't want the least of these. We don't want the real communion. Don't you go bringing us the real wine to the communion, whatever you do. People, communion isn't a, isn't a little sacrifice, a little ritual you go through. You do that to remember the man. No different than baptize, baptism or anything else. The real communion, you live every day. And you wait for the next one to come up. You wait for the next cluster of grapes to pull in this driveway. Amen. You understand Amen. that? Amen. Amen. And then it's up to that cluster of grapes whether it's going to become the fruit of the, the mm. vineyard or not. Or whether it's going to become wild grapes. It's up to that person. I guess it depends on which side of the Twix candy bar factory they're on. <laughs> Heaven or hell, and I'm not going to say which one is which. I guess I'm making it. Luke 13. Amen. Amen. Luke, Luke 13. Okay. Now, First five verses there. All right, Jesus made a, just a clear point. They thought just because somebody's family sinned or they sinned, destruction would come on them. Okay, that's why this happened. And I'm not going to go into that. But Jesus simply laid, leveled out the field and said, "Look, um, you know, unless you repent, you're going to perish. That's it. You either accept me or going to perish. Now, perish doesn't mean just destroyed. Perish means." to slowly degrade, okay? And that's what happens. So Jesus is saying, unless your mind changes and you start seeing the gospel, you as a person, as a nation, as a community, you'll begin to degrade morally, ethically, uh, you know, etc. And that's what he was saying. You will perish, not be destroyed. You will begin to degrade, all right? And that, that's what happened. Now, he spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. So what, now listen, what does God do? He's coming looking for what? The good ground. He's coming to look for the good ground. And he stopped at this fig tree. Whatever the fig tree is, you, Israel, a community, a nation, whoever, there is no fruit. They have not the true fruit of the vine. They have the leaves, but they have not the true communion. Fig trees were, were nasty because they take a lot of nutrients out of the ground, okay? Now, which would take from the vines and so on. So their, greens, their leaves would be green, see? And that's what a church does, a fake church, a fig tree church. That's what it does. It sucks in all this stuff from the community that looks real good and people do. It's sad. It's very sad. But notice, it says that he comes and he looks. He came and sought fruit thereon and found none. So the good ground he was looking for was actually the fruit, was the, the purpose. Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. So look, very important thing here. He picks a fig tree, and he's basically warning it. 
God comes back and he said, didn't come back and say, oh, hey, you're doing good. You're going to keep it up. You're doing a pretty good job. Yeah, you're running in pretty good. You keep it up. No, he didn't. He said, this is what I'm looking for. If I don't find it, cut it down. It's over. He goes back and says, I either are going to see the life of my son or you're done. Period. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. God didn't care how nice the root looked. He didn't care how nice the bark was. He didn't care how nice the leaves were. He came back and said, I want this one thing, and if it's not there, cut it down. I don't care how wonderful it looks. Amen. 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 And Jesus steps in and says, okay, he's warned now. They're warned now. They know that a change must come. They know that there's more. There's something different. Let me try once again to get them focused on the fruit of the true communion. And if not, then we're going to destroy them all. Amen. Amen. And if it bear fruit, well. And if not... Then after that, thou shalt cut it down. <clears throat> you know what he's saying there? How did you get into the wedding banquet without the white robe? <laughs> so you're in my vineyard, but you have not the new covenant. You see that? You can ask yourself where you are there. <clears throat> Whatever you're doing now in the vineyard is all needed. But I'm going to tell you something. You better have found the good part and you better understand the purpose. There's only one purpose in that vineyard. Listen, what did Jesus say about the one sheep? When one sheep is lost and then it's found, they rejoice. Amen. Are you in that vineyard to watch that next person be carried in on the pole? That one lost? Is that why you're working the vineyard? I hope so. There's one lost out there. Are you waiting for them to come in? And then when they come in, are you going to truly show them the love and forgiveness of a Christian? You're all in the vineyard. What are you doing? Some of you, by your testimonies and your life and your actions, should be the wine press. See? By your witness, you're convicting them. Yes, this is what I should do. This is what I should do. Some of you are just servants there. Guiding them and directing them properly to Christ. Amen. Yeah. Some of you can go over to the people in the thorns, maybe certain addictions or certain problems. You can get in there and help them. Over here, somebody a little bit dear. You have their personality. You can get in the in the stuff in the wayside. And you can help them. You're all in the vineyard, but for one purpose. See, that's it. One purpose. What? So they come to know this man right here. Jesus Christ, the power of the cross, of their Lord, Lord and Savior, what you are hearing and listening here today. Have you found it, the true gospel, the tree of life? Or have you found the tree of death that's going to be chopped down? You don't want to be that. You know what? Now listen, if you listen carefully, you know what the best thing for you to do then? Is if you're not ready, you don't want it, you get back out there. You get back out there so you can find yourself once again waking up all hungover or down and out or broke or whatever it is because you've drugged your alcohol because now once again you're that good ground and pray to God. Pray to God that he'll send somebody out there with a pole to carry you back. To carry you back to where you know you need to be at the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. You with me? Amen. All right, let's pray. Dear Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for your word and all you're doing in our lives. And Lord, here today, we just ask a special blessing on each and every heart and soul that's here that salvation is real to them. That there isn't a person here that, that is going to find themselves in hell if they were to take their last breath today. Lord, salvation is a free gift. It's a free gift. We don't have to work for it. God, you, you want to, through your messengers and your gospel, you carry us right to your feet. You carry us right there to the moment where we truly can be a light, a child of heaven, God. And bless us with what we heard here today as we may apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I hope you enjoyed the message God put on my heart to share with you. And there's many more to listen to. 
as one is not sufficient. We must tie them all together to hear the true message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We cannot preach the gospel without including the poor and the needy and the homeless and the least of these. That is the gospel of Jesus. As we look over our world today, it is so much needed that we step forward, we turn our lights on and we make ready for the coming of the bride of Christ. The hungry children and the lost and the homeless, the inmates and the poor, all of God's children. Until next time, may God richly bless you. I would love to hear from you. You may write to me at Bishop Jack Weiser, 14530, Route 28, Rockway, Pennsylvania, 15824. You may also call me directly at 814-590-3898 for more information. God bless you and have a great day.